In the middle of the New Mexico desert lies the largest renewable energy project in America's history. It's called Sunzia, and Pattern Energy is the company behind it all. Power is the backbone of America's economy, so projects like this are essential for our future. Sunzia is an over $11 billion endeavor and will generate 3,500 megawatts when complete. The power will eventually reach over 3 million consumers across America's West. Blattner, a company dating back to 1907, is leading the charge, constructing the infrastructure necessary for nearly 900 new wind turbines. Now, let's start with the bases. Before we see the concrete pour this morning, we wanted to see a uncovered foundation. They've excavated this, they've poured that foundation slab to create a nice working surface, and then they've tied all of this rebar in here. You could see from, from our position where we're standing, but definitely from the drone, that this is essentially just this gigantic pedestal all of this, once it's poured, will be covered by earth. You won't be able to see any of this. You'll just be able to see where the wind turbine's sprouting out of the ground. The crew, it's uncovered now, but it's pretty cold. We're in the desert. It gets cold in the winter, though. It's below freezing every night. This will be poured tomorrow. They're going to cover all of this with blankets to get the rebar up to temperature a little warmer before they pour tomorrow. They'll take those blankets off right before they pour so that there's there's no cracking, and then within a few days, this will be backfilled, and no one will ever see it again. These wind turbines are massive. They're essentially these giant towers with the wind pushing against them nonstop, making them spin round and round. That creates a ton of force on that tower, and to counteract that force, at the foundation, they've excavated this, they've tied all this rebar, and now they're pouring the concrete. Blattner crews pour two to three bases daily. Every base is roughly 425 yards of concrete, with each batch coming from the temporary batch plant about 15 minutes away. Each truck hauls about 10 yards and then dumps into a hopper, feeding an enormous telebelt truck. Now, why are they using this truck over a pump? A pump is typically around 50 yards per hour. This right now has an output of about 150 yards per hour. It's much, much faster, and he can park it here. He can put those stabilizers down. He can use that telescoping conveyor and then that pivot point there to reach that entire foundation with the concrete needed. The replacement truck is run by remote, so the guy with the controller up there, right here, he's just moving those controls to get that exactly where it needs to be, to turn it or to extend that belt either direction, place it all the way around. We can see the blanket around the foundation. It's a jacket, and then these little tubes here, coming from here, are the heat. It's pumping this heat in there. It's keeping that rebar nice and warm. As they're pouring the concrete, they're pulling these blankets back. And then once all the concrete's poured, they'll put the blankets back on there to help with the curing process to make sure the temperature is where it needs to be with it just around freezing right now. And finally, as they're placing that concrete, you'll notice a guy with this stick. He's moving up and down in there. It's a giant vibrator. It helps consolidate that concrete, get rid of those air voids. You don't want air voids that makes the concrete weaker. They're trying to consolidate that concrete as they go. And you can see they're moving in a circular motion. So they're placing a little bit at a time to make sure all that's consolidated as they work their way up the foundation. It's key to place it like this to make sure that foundation 
is as strong as possible. So that's how they pour them. Now let's see what they look like when they are backfilled and completed. This is the backfill operation. We just checked out a finished foundation. And here's what it looks like when it's almost brought back up to grade. They have two dozers. They're pushing this dirt uh, one foot lifts to cover that foundation. They have a roller there. They're wetting it with the water truck, compacting it. You have that soil tester there, making sure that compaction is where it needs to be all the way up to that finished grade. They're almost done here. Beautiful view, by the way. Uh, and we almost, almost at this point have a finished wind turbine foundation. And here we have a completely backfilled foundation. They just backfilled this yesterday. They'll do some finish grading to really tidy this up. And then it is ready for the wind turbine itself. This is a good view of the foundation itself. It's been completed. We have the steel, we have the concrete underneath us. This is the only bit of concrete that will be exposed uh, from now forever. They have the steel that's coming out of that reinforcement. This is what's gonna be tensioned to that foundation to keep that foundation in place. We have these grounding wires here, that solid copper, and then we have the conduit in the middle to drop those cables in there so they can pull the energy from here to where it needs to go. Each one of these pieces of reinforcing steel is threaded, so they'll bolt on They'll put the foundation here and then they'll thread bolts onto each. There are two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. <sighs> I think about 150 of those. I forgot to make a note of where I started, but about 150 of these pieces of steel, each one has a bolt. That's what keeps the whole thing connected. If you're looking to learn more about Blattner or come to work for Blattner on an amazing project like this all over the United States, you can check out their website linked here and in the description. Where does all of the concrete on this project come from? Well, it comes from the batch plant on site over yonder. They put it right in the middle. So those concrete trucks don't have to drive very far to any one of those foundations and it eliminates truck traffic on the surrounding area. So all the aggregate is brought in, the cement's brought in, everything's batched on site, the concrete trucks come in and then they drive to wherever they need to go to pour those foundations. Fun fact time. There are 916 wind turbines on this project. To build the foundation necessary for all 916, there is 450,000 tons of steel and 530,000 yards of concrete. And not just for the turbines, but all of the surrounding infrastructure. That's the foundations. But how do they gather the power from each turbine? Welcome to the collection side of the project. <clears throat> the giant chainsaw behind me is the tip of the collection spear. That is a trencher cutting a trench. The trench is about two feet wide, a little less, about four feet deep. That machine cuts about 4,000 linear feet of trench per day. It works basically similar principle to a chainsaw, spinning that chain around it picks that material up underneath the chain, it puts it onto a conveyor belt, and it spits it out into a windrow.
Behind me is a padding machine. This machine is run through here twice. The first go is to make a nice layer, uh, a nice smooth layer on the bottom of the trench, free of rocks, any bigger than 3 8 inch, so it doesn't damage the cable. They put the cable in there, and then they run it over here again to cover that cable. Again, taking these rocks, discarding them, putting the nice stuff in the trench, and then when they're done, they have a blade that'll come through and knock the rest of the material into the trench to backfill it. This is really key because those two cables, the fiber optic cable and the power cable, they cannot be damaged. So getting these rocks out of here keeps that damage from happening, keeps those cables nice and safe so that they can do what they need to do for each turbine. Here's the cable. This is what connects every point, every dot out here, every future wind turbine together. This is what transports what we're really after, the power. We're putting this in there and then we're putting an orange conduit in there as well, which will be a fiber line. The fiber line allows them to communicate with the control center, wherever that is. Uh, but this is really the, the key component here beyond the wind turbines. Without this, none of this, none of this would work. So they're putting it right now into that trench and then behind me is where they start to backfill. That concludes today's visit with Blattner, seeing how the wind turbine foundations are built. Hopefully we come back, if we're not abducted this evening, in a few months to see the actual wind turbines get constructed like giant Legos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.